All righty. Good evening, guys. This is Ron. It's Monday already, a little after 6 p.m. We go ahead and get started. Uh, see if we have any questions. Uh, last couple of days, all, actually, the, our lessons have been, been flowing pretty much from the same set of questions, but uh, we started off Saturday uh, with a question about prayer. We got into uh, faith and uh, a little bit about Christianity and who we are versus spirituality and that sort of thing. Uh, we uh, went into yesterday, uh, we, we, we talked further about photosynthesis and what that means and looking at it from a spiritual perspective as what happens with the sun, S-U-N, and plants, how that compares with uh, the melanin in our skin. And uh, Pastor did a great job of explaining that. Uh, so looking at that, that, that spiritual balance there, uh, we, uh, we, we, we talked about life. What, what does it mean to be life? What does it mean to be a giver of life? Uh, and, and, uh, something very, very simple, uh, you know, looking at and talking about the, the what it is to be the image of the creator, the image of God. And, uh, as we have truth as, 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 taken us on this journey that we have uh, released that image of God, that masculine energy image that, that kind of sits above everything and, and uh, the image of Jesus that we were given the, the, the blue eyed guy with the, the long curly hair. Uh, so we've released that and, and uh, it, it just kind of hit me, you know, it, we, we're so, we're so comfortable with these bodies that it's hard to imagine image without a body, without uh, something to, to look at. But but it's spiritual. The, the sight of it is internal and not external. So uh, any questions, any, anything today that you'd like to discuss, something that uh, may have crossed your mind? Anybody? Hey, Ron, this is Evelyn. Yeah. I have a comment. I was on social media today, and I saw they are drafting uh, kids 18, between the year of 18 and 25. Um, they said they passed the bill on that. What's your thoughts on that? The, or if you've heard anything or anyone else has heard anything about that. Evelyn, do me a favor. Say it one more time. 18 to 25, what, what, what happened? What was the bill? They're drafting, yeah, they, they're drafting uh, these young people for, uh, to get into the military. Yeah. Remember how the draft used to be a long time ago? Yeah. 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 No, I was not aware of that. Uh, my, my initial thought is this, uh, and, and it, it, it really... It kind of supports the question that I had as well, Evelyn. But my my initial thought is young people now are not necessarily going with the status quo uh, as far as the the God that we worshiped, the the, the church, uh, the way our church services were programmed, uh, the, the way the government is set up. Uh, and they're, they're not just buying stuff because you said it everything is being challenged and 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 as we look at the military might across the world i think that has become one of the other things that is uh something for them to protest or, or push back against but i uh, know i have not heard that but i'd be interested if anyone else has any uh more details on it well, I know that they have plans, but the military and the government has plans, but um, they're saying that the military enrollment had dropped and yes. they're trying to, um, yeah, they're trying to get more people to, well, they're going to make them, they're going to, vol instead of volunteering, then you're going to volunteer, you're going to be voluntold 
to join the military. That's why they got the drafting going on. And, um, yeah, that's why I saw that. But then, you know what, too, Ron, I was on my way to work, and I realized we're coming to the point we're realizing we don't need all this stuff in order to live on this mm-hmm. earth. You know that? I do believe that we're, since we're talking about this um, with the family on um, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we're realizing, and people are realizing, we don't need all this stuff in order to live on this earth. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah, I I, I think uh, part of what we do and and, and, uh, just, at least I think that has a lot to do with it, something to do with it. Uh, I, I think people's eyes are being opened. There, there is definitely an awakening taking place. And uh, I agree with you. I think, think people are rethinking what they th- thought life should look like or they've been told life should look like. So, good start. Does anyone else have any further information on Evelyn's question? Any thoughts? I I just looked that up, but I think 18 to 25 are required to register for the selective service, but I don't think we, we have a, a draft as such. Um, I looked at a bill that said, um, the House passed a bill that said that they should be automatically registered for a selective service. Usually you have to go somewhere and register, but the bill they passed was that they would be automatically registered mm-hmm. from 18 to 25 or whatever. But um, So registering and being two different things? The draft is a different thing. Um, okay. Okay. They have to they have to register and then if there is a war then they could they could be drafted. From the okay. they're they're legally it. required to register. Yeah. But the bill was that they would automatically be registered as opposed to going wherever it is to to register. Well, yeah. thank you for that fact check. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Anyone else? Anything else? I have a question for you. And I guess, I think it's kind of along the lines what Evelyn just asked, but I want to ask it a little differently. What I want to ask is, when I ask the question, tell me what your original thought, what, what, what feeling or emotion do you attach to this when I say it? Uh, how does this make you feel? Okay. Um, I read something that said the momentum for young black people, 18 to 23, is picking up in support of Donald Trump. And I was watching one of these news magazines yesterday, and this young lady was being interviewed, and she said the draw to him, what we like is that he's not a politician. He doesn't do things the way the politicians. What is your initial thought on that? What, what, how do you feel about that? Nobody? Um, I'm laughing because I just feel like our society has is, is become so celebrity influenced that yeah. people will do dumb things for dumb reasons. Um, but, um, and well, I agree with him. He's not a politician. That's true. Um, but, uh, in terms of voting for him just because he's not a politician. I don't know. I don't know about that reasoning. But anyway, um, it it just makes me wonder if people are really listening to and, and thinking about 
the kinds of things he's saying. I mean, because if you're really listening and thinking about what it is he's saying, then <laughs> I don't know how you can rationalize voting yeah. for him. <laughs> but that's just me. I don't know. Because what he's saying is 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 basically anti-democratic, <laughs> anti anti women, anti black, anti any. I mean, it's it's like yeah. crazy. I don't understand how anybody who's has a rational, who is a rational, reasonable thinking person, can say they not say. hear this. Yeah. Unless they just believe all that stuff he's advocating. <laughs> this is for Mal. I agreed with Audrey. From my first thought was scary, and scary in the sense of what she just said. Like, are they really listening? Are they hearing what he's saying? Do they realize the people he's influencing to go towards craziness, for lack of a better word? I agree with Audrey. Okay. Thank you, Ramel. Anybody else a thought? At least a thought you'd like to share. I know everybody's had a thought or feeling about it. Well, do you know what my initial thought was? Uh, 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 my, my feeling about it. I, 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 my, my mind went back to something. Barb was saying the other day when she said we don't see the negative stuff anymore. Or, or those weren't her words. That's mine. Uh, those, I, I can't remember her exact words. Uh, the, the what what I'm saying is the journey that we on is not just to fill us with information. It's not just to for us to be in rhythm with the universe. The rhythm with the universe is beautiful and it has a purpose and it brings us closer together. And it also ties us to being tied to the universe, ties us to mankind. And what I'm saying is I've made up my mind that that's not going to be a negative thing. I'm not going to shape it. I'm not going to try to say what I want it to be, but I made up my mind that it doesn't matter. Pastor said something yesterday or, or Saturday, I don't remember. He it, it was we were talking about the election and he said it doesn't matter who it, you know certain things are going to happen regardless. So that's kind of I, I and and it, it wasn't something that I I, I uh, uh, had to think about a whole lot. I just noticed that I'm I've moved to a place where, I, and it, it, of course, not everything, because I'm I'm you know I have work and work in progress like everybody else. But certain things like that that we have no control over is how other people see. It. It's like Audrey just said, it, when when you hear what this man says, and and but you don't hear it. What can be done about that? So you have to know or have to feel anyway that this is something that the universe is aware of. So what does that mean? That means that we're not here for nothing. We've talked about the Stargate. We've talked about uh, uh, all these things lining up and, 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 and being uh, open to us to see and understand and explain it. We talk about influencing energy when we talk about uh, turning storms or whatnot. Be positive. See something positive. You don't have to see the outcome. You don't have to see what is what it's going to look like. But be positive about it. Don't let it sway you to, to feel fear or dread or doubt or be anxious or uh, You are here and you've been prepared. You have been prepared. 
A doctor doesn't, you can graduate from medical school all you want. You don't know you're a doctor until you have a patient in front of you. And when you have a patient in front of you and you do what you do, then it, it, you realize who you are. Well, all we've done, we are action too. And this is it. This is it. Does that make sense at all? It does. I, I, I appreciate the answer you've given. Yeah, I appreciate that answer you've given. Yeah, we don't need to be shaken by anything. There are things that 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 you know will for a minute. You you have to breathe on. But we're being prepared here. I, I think about this sometimes. We we started studying the beginning. We we're asking about the beginning, and we went back to Genesis. Then we went to the third chapter of John where uh, Nicodemus and Jesus met and we studied that. We went to uh, John, the first chapter. I mean, we, we studied as much as anything we can. And lo and behold, we end all the way back to before the Bible was even constructed. And we started looking at Kemet. We started looking at Egypt. And George started it off talking about kings and queens of Africa. And it moved that slave ship out of our view. And pretty soon the view was clear so we could see. And we took the journey. So here we are. That fear is old fear. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't ride with that anymore. Ron, this is Evelyn. I have a comment if nobody else does. So you I believe that Donald Trump that this this is his purpose to do this is one of the reasons why he came into the earth. You know, things happen and it doesn't look the way like you say, it doesn't look the way that we think it should look. It may look bad. We put um we try to shape it or whatever. But what if this is why he came into the earth? I, and then I, we say he, they say he was the chosen one or something at one time when he first I, ran or when he became the president. Yeah, that 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 I thought was a joke, but you know there there, there may be maybe something to it because I believe you. I, I think all of this is purposeful. I I and 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 I don't when they say purposeful, I don't think Donald Trump is detached from Evelyn or Ron or anybody else on this phone. I don't think Obama is detached from us. I think all of these things had to happen in the sequence that they did to get all of this to turning in this direction. And and uh so when you when you when you say that uh if, if you really believe that he uh is purposeful and has a reason for being here then so does Evelyn. Well, I, I agree with Evelyn. I think he was a catalyst for us because of mm -hmm. because of the the kind of things that he said and did, and the Christian Church said, "Oh, that's our guy." Um, it made us look beyond all of that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I I agree that his purpose was. To help us get to where we are. I, I yeah. I, I I agree with that. And yeah, I can I can honestly say that he um he does it the things he says and the things he does, they don't move me like they used to. Yeah. In terms of I I'm I'm not I don't have any fear of that anymore i mean i'm cautious but i i don't 
I don't fear it anymore because um, it's going to be what it's going to be. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so it doesn't worry me as much anymore. There is a, a, a young kid, well, he's a grown man, uh, that, that I work with that is a huge Trump supporter. And, and you may have heard me talk about this guy. Uh, you couldn't find a nicer guy. And I, I thought about him when I, I listened to the young people talk. Uh, if, if everything is spiritual, it's amazing to me how we hear and see what we want to hear and see. And, and uh, so I, I, I look at what the, the, the younger people are saying, the younger black kids especially, and, and uh, I think their rebellion is more against the status quo and what my generation or some of your generation stood for more than uh, or anything. So I don't think they really fully understand, or I know they don't, what they're saying, but I think their rebellion is just so strong that they can't see the reality of the situation. But nevertheless, what, whatever that may be, uh, I say to us, be internal. Never stop being internal. Be who you are. Be, be who you see inside of you. You have built that. You have constructed that. And you have used the rhythms of the universe to, to build yourself up. And we have done so together. So that is strong. And, right. and, and, <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead and finish your thought. No, I I, I was just saying, remember uh, what we, we have been browbeaten and, and beaten physically for generations behind generation until the fear is real, the fear is strong. But remember this, this was all purposed for us to be who we are. This resistance was purposed for you to be who you are. So stand strong. This is the reason you're here. This is why we're in the earth. Thank you, Barb. Thanks. I just wanted to add as well uh, to what you said about being internal. Not only being internal, but be intentional. Yeah. In other words, that's the desire part. That's setting the desire. We understand who we are, and we understand how we um, uh, get re-energized uh, through meditation and through uh, talking with each other. But after that, be intentional. Continue to see the universe with those, as you say, and as others said, and, and, and I think Evelyn, the positives, uh, that regardless of how it looks, regardless of how it sounds, remember that's the illusion. Yeah. The truth is, the truth is, we are all spiritual beings, and when we when we uh, re, re, uh, uh, speak truth to the origin of truth, it resonates, and it doesn't matter what the illusion of the audible or the visual is. That's what's going to reverberate, and that's what's going to be available to all the other people who are not quite at that point where they understand who they are yet. So as you, as you all have said, you know, we, we're, we're the, we, we, we're the ones who stand in the breach. We're the bridge builders. We are the, we have to be internal and we have to be intentional about, uh, about our thoughts and our desires and our concerns. Thank you. Thank you. I like that. Be intentional. Yes. Yes. And 
the strength of what we're doing, what we're doing now, uh, not only are we strengthening each other, uh, I, I, I'm trying to remember the, uh, I think as Barb said yesterday with us being a conduit, we, 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 uh, we, we draw this energy into the earth for a purpose. So, so part of what we do on, on the line every day, uh, it, 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 here, here's an example if this this makes sense I, I I went to work this morning and I take I took three bananas with me I took three bananas because uh I didn't have an apple and I had an apple but I I, I didn't have it where I used to keep my apples and I didn't see the apples but but I took three bananas and why do I take three bananas? Why do I take extra fruit to work with me? Because there are a couple of people there that are diabetic and they go around and they say, does anybody have any fruit? Ron, do you have any fruit? You usually have fruit. And usually I have fruit. So now when I go to the grocery store and I buy fruit, I think about them and I'll take something extra. And uh, so what does that have to do with what we're doing? We are supplying fruit. We are putting this out there in the macro for anybody who, who needs it. And, and, and when this awakening happens, when, when people start to think, what if, oh, 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 okay, where am I? What, what are we doing? Why am I thinking like this? What if this happens? Why can't I, hey, let me think about doing this a different way. Let me think about, uh, 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 my life in the direction I'm going in and and this the the the, the country or, or my spirituality when this awakening happens the fruit will be waiting for them it'll be waiting that's what we're doing so not only are we preparing ourselves we are making ready for others to come with us to come come uh, uh when, when when they're ready or uh, uh, the the macro will be available to those who hunger for truth and and and, and that goes in with uh that 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 scripture that says there's some the, the the farmer goes out and I'm paraphrasing right the farmer goes out and he gets some in in the morning and then he gets some in the noonday you are the morning and and and, and you're preparing this we're preparing this. There will be some that come later. So this is an honor. This is a privilege. This is this is why we are here in the earth. But anyway, any any questions or thoughts on, on anything we we talked about so far? I have a question then, Ron. Um the the scripture says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. How is that coinciding with what we're talking about? What is the harvest? Who are the laborers? Well, I I I, I think uh, uh, we we just really sort of explained that. If somebody can help me with that, if you if you wish, or uh, the, the the laborers are those who who put in the work. The laborers are those who who till the soil. The laborers, are, laborers are, are are those who uh, uh, go out and 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 uh, choose the harvest, pick pick the fruit. So it is those, and and I I, I say that I certainly see us as being part of that. Uh, and and I also see when I say us. I mean, our union, our, our rhythm, and our oneness with the ancestors, those on the other side who are trying to, to uh, uh, get our attention as well are things that we, we may need to, to understand. So, uh, uh, you know, that's who I see are the laborers. And, and it is through few because of religion. There, there are some that are, you know, that are diligent about and and have a strong belief and a strong faith, but they just caught up in Christianity or, or religion. So it is up to those who are on the right track 
to, to be steadfast. So somebody somebody help me with that because I, I think we're right in the middle of that. Please. Um, I'll try, Ron. What, what is go ahead. Um I don't exactly recall what the what that scripture is, but uh -huh. the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few, is that what it is? Um, yeah, yes. and, and and it says and it says uh, therefore pray. This is Matthew um, nine thirty five through eight thirty eight. Therefore pray that um, earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into His harvest. Okay, when we talk about laborers, we're talking about um. Well, the the inference is that they're tilling the soil, mm -hmm. and soil is consciousness. Um, so the laborers who who um, make a conscious effort to to take the internal journey to find themselves, um, and the harvest is finding yourself and finding out who you really are. Um, so the harvest is plentiful because when you find out who you really are, um, it's, it's like you become a new person in terms of what you know your, your, your superpower to be, so to speak. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but the few laborers are that there aren't very many people who go on that internal journey. Um, yes, they may let a religion get in the way, um, or they may let life get in the way. They may let whatever get in the way. So um, in terms of people who really take the journey, yeah, there are, there are few. Anyway, that's my interpretation of that. Go ahead, Bart. No, I, I wanted to just give give the uh, cite the scripture. Um, I I agree. Um, when you look at how much can be achieved, how much can be accomplished for people all over the world, billions and billions of people. Um, and, and and if billions of people were enlightened and knew who they were, the world would be so different. All of these illusions of of depravity, of being poor, of starvation, of war, rumors of war, all of that stuff would uh, would be minimized if not done away with. If if, if everyone had access to this harvest of enlightenment, of knowing self, of knowing one's own divinity, and knowing one's relationship with every other entity on the planet, whether it's it's another human or whether it's inanimate like rocks or water or rivers or streams. Uh, when, 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 when we know that, and that's when we uh, all become ones who live in harmony with each other, who can listen to dissenting opinions without saying, I'm going to execute, execute you, uh, who can um, uh, talk about uh, what's good for the youth, our youth with all of this new AI and all that stuff. So the harvest is plentiful. The harvest is peace, joy. It's truth. It's balance. It's... Uh, it's judgment. It's it's um, it's righteousness. Uh, it's harmony. Um, but the laborers are few. However, however, it only takes a few laborers to sow seeds. And when laborers sow seeds in the right soil, in the right consciousness, uh, in the macro. Um, where you have a universal energy, a universal source 
uh, that can provide everything needed, the sun, to nourish those seeds, then you have to think it doesn't matter all that much about how few the laborers are if they are targeting what they do uh, to being who they are and walking therein. Beautifully say it, ladies. Beautifully say yeah, it. I love, yeah. I, I love, I love this this class. I, I, I love this group. Uh, somebody always sees the more. Uh, that's that's good. So, from what I, Barbara, what you just said, you and Audrey just said, it was, it's very profound. Um, so, so the harvest is enlightenment, and it's enough for all of us, and. It's enough for all of us. And the more that you partake of it, the more others who we feel that is not laboring, they're getting it too, whether they know it or not. Just like Ron said, what we're doing on Saturdays and Sundays and Mondays is making a difference. It's bringing more enlightenment into the earth. And it's enough for everybody. All you have to do is be receptive and open. And you don't even have to be mindful of that. You, um, you're getting what we're getting. It just happens. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? It does yeah. indeed. Yes. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions or comments? Is this a good place to pause or would you want to continue? What do you guys think? I saw something that I thought was interesting. And uh, when we studied the 12th chapter of Genesis, uh, when we studied the 12th chapter of Genesis, we talked about uh, those first few verses and talked about Abraham. And I want to go back there because I, I, I want to link it to something. I want to start. I'm going to read for you. You don't have to turn if you don't want to. Excuse me. And uh, I'm going to start in the 11th chapter, that last verse, verse 32. In the days of Tehran were 205 years and Tehran died in Haran. Now the Lord said to Abram, go forth from your country, from your relatives, from your father's house to the land which I will show you and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make you a great nation, make your name great, excuse me. And so you shall be blessing, be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse uh, uh, and the ones who curse you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went forth as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his nephew, and all of their possessions which they had accumulated, and the persons which they had acquired in Haran, Haran. And they went out to the land of Canaan, thus they came to the land of Canaan. And Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem, Shechem to the oak of Marah. Now the Canaanites were then in the land. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. So he built an altar there and the Lord who had appeared to him. Then he proceeded from there to the mountain 
to on the east of Bethel, and he pinched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Um, we talked about Abraham standing in between Bethel and I. I don't. I didn't want to go through through that whole thing again, but I wanted to, to, to show you what we looked at when we got there. I want to compare that to something. Here is, I'm in the eighth chapter of Joshua. I'm in the eighth chapter of Joshua. And uh, I'm going to read this and, and then I want to talk. I want to talk about uh, where Abraham is standing. Now the Lord said to Joshua, do not fear or be dismayed. Take all the people of the war, all of war with you and arise and go up to air. A-I. See, I have given it, given into your hand the king of I, his people, his city, and his land. You should do to I and its king just as you did to Jericho and its king. And you should take only its spoil and its cattle and its plunder for you, for yourself, setting an ambush for the city be behind the it. So he goes up to destroy I, and he finds himself, he's in the same place uh, that Abraham was. I'm trying, to, there was a version here that stood out to me. Oh, verse 12, and he took 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and I on the west side of the city. So the station, the people, all the army that was on the north side of the city and, and its rear guard on the west side of the city. What is, what is, what are we talking about here? Why does I and Bethel still play a role what, what, what's being said here? Um, when we talked about this before, and, and, and I'm, I'm talking about us, okay? Uh, when, when we talked about this before, we said uh, I means a heap. It means waste. So what is it that is being wasted here? Uh, All the things that you value, all the things that you value. Listen to this. This 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 sounds a little weird, but but think about it for a minute. Can fear be something that you value? Can we be so comfortable with fear that it is something that I go to when we're in a tight space? So when 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 I looked at this, this is this is kind of what this you know kind of this is what this says to me. Abram represents that part of because this is not Abraham yet. This is Abram. Abram represents that part of us that that is on the journey who has looked at those things as as Audrey said, land of consciousness. That's the journey. That's to leave your father's house. The journey is I'm I'm you going to be a cultivator. Is that not talking to us? You are going to be a cultivator. And when you cultivate, you're going to see, as as Barb just decided, I mean, just 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 uh, uh say it, uh, uh, uh this this internal journey that that we uh have been discussing, all of this is looking at these things that are valuable to you. It also looks at religion. Abraham's father represented religion. But when you leave the father's house, when you leave the religion, you start seeing you. You start seeing yourself. So the Abraham in you that starts the journey identifies it. And 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 you 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 stand in the midst of it. You stand only with with with, with the house of God with his Bethel on one side, and and the, this rub, rubble rubble a waste on the other side. 
I also means when you follow it through with the root, it means to, to, to plunder something, but to take something and twist it and, and, and mangle it so badly that it ceased to be what it was. It looks like something else. So, so you take something and you move it to a place where it becomes what you want it to be. Can this be saying? Joshua means deliverance. Can this be saying that this journey that we're on, we have moved to a place where we have seen all the manipulations done in the earth. We have seen the manipulations through politics. We've seen the wars that are going on and how the people are awakening from these manipulations. We've seen the manipulations of religion and how young people are awakening and stop going to, to uh, uh, church like they used to. We're even seeing, uh, 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 you know, the, the manipulations as to how they are trying to educate our kids now and not uh, show them black history and who they are. So all of these things are being shown to us. And all of this is a part of our journey. Can it be that it is now time to destroy I? Um, it is time to stand up, to see who you are. And, and the first thing he says is do not be dismayed. Do, do not let this frighten you. So this these internal things that we talked about, because uh, I'm, I'm mentioning the external things because that's what we're familiar with. But as we grow, as we go on this journey, uh, it, it, it starts internally first. That's what changes things. But it is time that we face who we are, face these things that we fear, face these things that we, we once thought meant something, face these things that have been tossed at us that we have been, uh, uh, you know, manipulated into to seeing and believing and, and thinking have value to us. If nobody else can do this, we have to be the ones. I is spiritual. All of this is spiritual. And everything that we have discussed today, whether or not it be a politician, whether or not it be a war, whatever it be, it's all spiritual. So you, you look at this, this thing that has been manipulated. Uh, Christianity has manipulated man for years. The government has manipulated people for years. And we've bought into all of this. But look at who you are. Stand up and look at who you are. So Abram is the one with faith that begins and takes the journey. And Joshua is the deliverance. And all of that describes who we are. Does it make sense, y'all? Yes, it does for me. Anything it says, about um, I'm it sorry. says is that what I hear you saying rather is that uh, Joshua as the deliverer, we have we all have that energy of Joshua in us. Yes. And we can deliver ourselves. Yes. That's what that's what that's what uh, leaving the consciousness um, uh, of what you knew back then in your father's house and taking your own internal journey, as you said. And you're between Ire and Bethel. Bethel is house of God. Well, you are you're God. That's part of. So you 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 look at all of the stuff like you said you were comfortable with. You were comfortable with the religion of the time. Mm -hmm. You were comfortable with the customs. Mm -hmm. You were comfortable with the people you were surrounded with. But at a certain point in time, uh, you've got to 
you've got to make that decision that just because I'm comfortable doesn't mean that I'm I, I feel like I fit here in a sense. This is not who I really am, yeah. and it's 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 uh, the the eye on one side and the and the house of Bethel on the other, and that internal journey, as you said, is uh leads us out leads us from all of those things that we had comfort in, all of those uh, uh fears that we we had comfort in our fears even because our fears can keep us uh, from exploring, can keep us so bound that we don't want to see what's beyond, uh, quote unquote, the wall of fear. So yeah, we, we, we can be bound by our fear as well. Thank you. Thank you. Beautifully said, appreciate the explanation. I love who we are. And and as all has already been said, uh, uh changing ourselves uh is changing ourselves is what how we put things in the macro as we say it. And and one day we 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 will talk about that even more because I think that's important and not just a cliche. And Ron, one more thing, we can go deeper than that. Yes, ma'am. I love me. I have, since we've been talking about what we're talking about, mm -hmm. I am loving me more so now. Yes. You know, instead of, you know, reaching out to things or people, I am more comfortable. I am more in love with me. So it does go deeper. And I appreciate it. I'm done. Thank you. You're right. Love yourself. Ron. Yes, ma'am. Hi, this is Kathy. I got on late and, and I have a question. And how are you today? Um, I came in on the conversation about um the scripture of the um the laborers being few but the harvest being plentiful. Yes. And I listened to the explanation that Audrey gave, and I listened to what Barbara said. And and I'm listening to what you're saying now about fear and everything else. And it hit me that once again, we just uncovered another spiritual truth, because that has been the scripture from what I've understood and being in the religious settings and being around Caucasians who go to Africa and other what they call, quote unquote, third world nations to evangelize. That has been the scripture that has been used for evangelism. And I think for the first time, we just uprooted what evangelism even is and what it looks like. Because what I understood that scripture to, to mean from having people talk to me about evangelism, and I'm doing air quotes with that, I'm going to these places to make these people look like me, make these people understand that they are to act, think, and live like I am giving them the understanding of who they are supposed to be. And with the explanation that Audrey and Barbara gave, the understanding of, of what that scripture means is that it's a, it's a journey of self-exploration and understanding who I am according to, even though he didn't say the principles of Mayotte today, but understanding from everything that's been taught, it's not about going somewhere teaching somebody to think like me. It's about going somewhere and putting in the macro, the understanding of exploring who you are and understanding spiritually who you are, as opposed to what the scripture basis for me coming to you saying, learn this way, think this way, act this way, according to the the principles of let, let's just say according to all of the don't do's as opposed to what I am supposed to do it opened mm -hmm. all of that up for me so I feel like we just dug up a misunderstanding and a misconception about even I'm going to use this term loosely evangelism Yeah. because when you talk about evangelizing someone the journey of evangelism starts with self-discovery and knowing who you are. I can't give you anything that I'm not. And when I understand the principles of who I am and put that in the macro, that's what helps you go into the, the discovery of understanding who you are, not going to a country and sitting there teaching you 
that to think like this according to this scripture that we don't even understand what those things mean. And then to pull that into what you were just saying now about fear, fear of what? Fear of being different. Fear of not being like everyone else. That's what's held us back for so long. And that's why we are so, we're peculiar people now because we don't care about being different. Yes. As long as we understand who we are spiritually and, and are being right and are being What's the word I want? Being birthed into this understanding of self-discovery according to who I really am. So I see that all tying together. And to me, that was an epiphany and an aha moment when I heard Audrey describe that because I'm thinking, girl, you are uprooting all of these things that have been taught to us and having someone go in as a missionary and teaching all of these things that never really stuck because we didn't give them an, ad- an awareness of self and identity. And I just yeah. didn't want us to miss that because I think that's a very important discussion that we just had. And we uprooted, once again, a principle that, that was just a total misconception. And I just wanted to, to open that up and say, I applaud that and I'm so thankful that we are, we are thinking beyond the box now and seeing the reality of truth of who we really are. And I just wanted to share those thoughts. So thank you for allowing me to say all of that. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Kathy. Well, thank I'm, 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 yeah, no, well, thank you. Well yeah. said, Kathy, because I didn't even think that far ahead. So I really appreciate your comments. No, I appreciate yeah. what you when you're saying it. I'm like, oh my God, they're digging up evangelism because having been to Africa and having been quote unquote on a mission trip. And having heard people that I work with who, um, the Caucasians who go in, that's the scriptural basis for what they go for. You know, we're going to the hedges and the highways and byways to do what? I'm one of the laborers to go in there and, and change this mindset of these people who are so terribly wrong. And I'm sitting there thinking when you were speaking today, oh, my God, do you know what you're saying and what you're uprooting and what you're opening up is so vast because that takes the whole premise away that I need to go somewhere and evangelize somebody. So I'm just thrilled by what's happening. I, I love what we're saying and what we're learning. And thank you all for, for saying everything that you just said. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, Barbara, I, I'm not going to forget you. Uh, go, go ahead. Why is it? No, I was just saying well said, Kath. Okay. Thank you. When this flows, this is beautiful, y'all, to, to, to listen to everybody's input uh, and how everything ties together. You're right, Kathy. When you you just said that, I, 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 I had not seen it that way, but you're absolutely right. Beautifully said. Remember who we are, guys. Remember who we are. Hey, Ron. Yes, sir. How you doing, Charles? I'm doing great. I'm I'm listening to everything. Okay. I have a question. Okay. When people do this vandalized thing, each evangelist, what is they doing? I mean, what's the difference in when you? What does the vandalized mean, and what does it do? Evangelist. Evangelist does, and what it means. I mean, what it means as the word of God is telling us to go out to highways and byways to tell people about how to live or how to be themselves. Yeah. Not not okay. not, not, not how to be themselves, Charles. I like what Kathy just said. I, I, I go and tell you how to be like me and think like I do. Uh, I, I think that's a beautiful way of putting it, because because as as we know now, ninety nine percent of the people don't know what's what the scripture says. They're just going in and saying, "Hey, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ?" and 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 just reading scriptures. There's nothing is being explained or broken down. So, uh, so that's what I'm talking about when yeah. Jesus. He taught. He didn't preach or anything like that. He just taught how to live, what and 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 what's to do.
You see that there, Charles? I don't want to. I, I thought it's a good time to pause. I don't want to disconnect if he's coming back. Any any um, thoughts? I have I have a thought about that. Okay. Until he gets back, um, I don't exactly remember where where that term comes from in terms of where it is in the scriptures, mm -hmm. but I think it may be in New Testament. Maybe something Paul wrote or something like that. I'm not sure. But anyway, but what it has come to mean is is basically indoctrination into religion. That's basically what it means now. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, it's I think technically it means like bringing the good news. Mm -hmm. But it it's the good news of what? Right mm -hmm. now, it's just used to indoctrinate people into religion, and that's all. That's I it. mean, I know I've I've met a lot of missionaries in Africa, and I've met a lot of Africans who've been converted to Christianity. But even the missionaries will say Christian Christianity in Africa is a mile wide, but an inch deep. So what does that say about them and what they're doing over there if if they think that's the case? So um, you're just trying to indoctrinate people into religion, I think. Um, not really, and it's not really about spirituality or helping people realize who they are. Anyway. Thank you. And that, and I, thank I you. agree 100% with Audrey Ryan because yeah. it's supposed yeah. to be, quote unquote, spreading and sharing the good news of the, quote unquote, gospel. And now that we are understanding a lot of things are hidden in that gospel that was just used to enslave us and to keep us in a place of not knowing who we are. That's why I'm so excited by what we we're talking about tonight, because it shows us yet another misconception of what we've been taught because in what we learned, and I'm sure Audrey can attest to this too, having gone to Africa, when we got there, I learned so much more from them and the things that they were doing and how they were living that was unimpeded by religion. And then when you try to bring religion into that and infuse that into what they're already doing and what they know to be true, it gets very confusing for them, I'm sure. They didn't say that, but I'm sure it could right, definitely Kathy. have been that way. Mm -hmm. Kathy, and so and they that's were, why I'm saying. Sorry. Go ahead, Audrey. I just no, wanted to interject that they were much more spiritual before the religion exactly. came into it. Exactly. We we saw them being spiritual, and we, we tapped into that. And they said they were going to remember the Black missionaries because that's not usually what they got when other missionaries came in. And so it's it's just a lot of confusion that goes in there to try to convince them to not be spiritual. And so, you know, that's why I'm glad we were having this conversation. I hope that Charles was back on and that he heard all of this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what I'm trying to tell that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, they they going and and, and trying to change your your way of thinking and your way of believing. And they have never sat in the sitting and listen to them or, or try to do what they do. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because a lot of people now tell, in, in, in this world now is telling you what to do, how to act, and who to be and, and who to be with. And I mean, they, they seem like they're trying to plan your life for you instead of teaching you. Making it more confusing? Um, yeah, it's making it more confusing. And well, then by the time you learn and get it, you can spend all this time not be on this earth on a wasted time. Now you understand? And believe in it. Yeah. We do understand. And, and and that's the value of this conversation, as Kathy has said, all of this is being uprooted. 
the, the thing too that that is not um unnoticed is the pe most of the time the people go in to evangelize uh places where people of color nobody goes to evangelize Europe at least I've never heard of it it may maybe they do but 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 uh it's usually you know I equate that you live in certain places that you don't know the creator. And, and that is not true. I don't know your creator. I don't know who you see the creator as. And and uh, but that's the beauty of this this discussion. All of that is is being challenged. So anyone else? Questions or comments? Well, I'm, saying, I'm just saying, I, I, I thank everyone for bringing up and bringing out, you know, of this because a lot of people, you know, they've been whitewashed for a long time. And some of the African people saying, y'all believe this different than I believe. Y'all don't even, it's, it, it, with this so rich country, you're supposed to have the better belief than them, but we we worse than them. If you can understand what I'm saying, yeah, very much, Charles, and, and people again equate materialism and wealth with knowing God, and uh, that nothing could be further from the truth. Good discussion, y'all. Good discussion. Uh, seems like a good place to pause. Uh, again, just remember who we are. And I love the, all the stuff we talked about. And it seems like we, we touched on several subjects. And I'm going to have to listen to it again for Saturday because I'm not going to remember. <laughs> I don't remember stuff when I try to do a recap. Like, ah. But uh, anyway. Good, good job. You guys have a great week and look forward to uh, Saturday, okay? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Good night.